Hello everyone, welcome to Business School 101. Imagine you're trying to figure out how well a country's economy is doing. Maybe you want to know if people are getting richer, businesses are growing, or if the government has more money to invest in infrastructure. Economists use a powerful tool called Gross Domestic Product, GDP, to measure the size and health of an economy. But what exactly is GDP? What are the differences between nominal GDP and real GDP? What are its uses and limitations? In this video, I will discuss these questions with you. Section 1. What is GDP? Let's start with the basics. GDP, or gross domestic product, is the total market value of all goods and services produced within a country over a specific period, typically a year or a quarter. In simple terms, GDP tells us how much a country is producing and how its economy is performing. For example, if you consider all the cars manufactured, food produced, and services offered by companies in the US that's all included in the GDP. It's an indicator of economic health, when GDP is growing, it usually means businesses are thriving, jobs are being created, and consumers are spending. Section 2. Nominal GDP versus Real GDP. Now, let's move to two key concepts, nominal GDP and real GDP. These two terms are essential to understanding how we measure economic performance, especially over time. Nominal GDP is GDP measured at current market prices, which means it includes all changes in prices that occurred during the year. If prices rise due to inflation, nominal GDP will rise as well, even if the actual amount of goods and services produced hasn't changed. Real GDP, on the other hand, adjusts for inflation. It gives us a more accurate picture of how much the economy is actually growing by keeping prices constant, so we can compare production across different time periods without price distortions. The relationship between the nominal GDP growth rate, real GDP growth rate, and the inflation rate can be described using the following formula, nominal GDP growth rate equals real GDP growth rate plus inflation rate. Let's say, nominal GDP grew by 7% in a given year, inflation during that year was 2%. So real GDP growth rate equals nominal GDP growth rate minus inflation rate equals 7% to 2% equals 5%. Section 3, Why Real GDP Matters Why does this distinction between nominal and real GDP matter? Imagine this, if nominal GDP grew by 10% in a year, but inflation was also 10%, the real value of what was produced in the economy didn't increase at all. It just means prices went up. This is why real GDP is considered a better measure of true economic growth, because it strips out the effects of inflation. For example, suppose the GDP of the US was $20 trillion last year, and this year it's $21 trillion. At first glance, it looks like the economy grew by $1 trillion, or 5%. But if inflation during that period was 4%, the real GDP growth would be just 1%. The inflation-adjusted figure gives a clearer picture of the real increase in production and economic activity. Section 4, Uses of GDP. GDP is a crucial tool for measuring a country's economic performance and is widely used by governments, economists, and businesses for several purposes. Number 1. Economic growth measurement. GDP is the most commonly used metric to measure economic growth. By tracking changes in real GDP over time, policymakers and analysts can determine whether the economy is expanding or contracting. Number 2. Policy decision-making. Governments and central banks use GDP data to formulate economic policies. For instance, if GDP growth is slowing, central banks might lower interest rates to stimulate investment and consumption. Conversely, if the economy is overheating, they may raise rates to control inflation. Number 3. International comparisons. GDP allows comparisons between the economic performances of different countries. Adjusting GDP figures using purchasing power parity, PPP, or exchange rates helps to assess the relative size and wealth of economies around the world. Number 4. Standard of living indicator. Although imperfect, GDP per capita is often used as an indicator of the average standard of living in a country. It provides insight into how wealthy or poor a country is, on average. Section 5, Limitations of GDP. While GDP is an essential economic indicator, it has its limitations and doesn't capture all aspects of a country's well-being. Number 1. Doesn't measure income inequality. GDP measures the total output of an economy but says nothing about how income and wealth are distributed. A country might have a high GDP, but if most of the wealth is concentrated in the hands of a few, it doesn't reflect the economic reality for most people. Number 2. 
excludes non-market activities, GDP doesn't account for unpaid work like housework, volunteer work, or child care, all of which contribute significantly to the well-being of society. Similarly, informal economies that are not officially recorded also go uncounted in GDP. Number 3. Environmental degradation, GDP measures economic output but not the environmental costs of that production. For example, activities that contribute to pollution or resource depletion may increase GDP in the short term but have long-term negative effects that GDP doesn't account for. Number 4. Quality of life, GDP per capita provides some insight into standard of living, but it doesn't measure quality of life factors like happiness, health, or education. Countries with similar GDPs may have very different levels of public well-being. Section 6. Conclusion. To wrap up, GDP is a crucial indicator of economic activity and growth, but understanding the difference between nominal GDP and real GDP is key to analyzing how much of that growth is due to actual increases in production versus just rising prices. Although GDP helps us measure the size of an economy, it also has limitations in terms of addressing income inequality, environmental impact, and quality of life. Alright, that is all for today's topic. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more insights into economics. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.